So here we have the VPython Foucault's Pendulum program for uh, this class. Um, so we're just going to go and run it just to show that it works out here real quick. So in this view here, we see the the pendulum running uh, on an Earth, uh, or some planet with a day that lasts about a thousand seconds. The pendulum is one meter long and has a period of approximately two seconds. Um, the path has been drawn out for about one uh, revolution, uh, so that we see, or one revolution of the pendulum, so we see that whole trail as it goes along. And then also on the graph, we see um, a plot of the position. Um, the x position versus the y position, a parametric plot to show us the uh, position of the pendulum relative to the rotating uh, reference frame. So now if we look at the uh, code, um, we, uh, we can see that we've created a, a simple pendulum uh, with some initial values for its mass, its um, angular momentum, uh, yeah, angular momentum and rotational inertia, um, and furthermore, we set an initial uh, force of gravity and we set that the torque on the pendulum is going to be equal to the cross product of the ball's position and the force of gravity. Um, we have a time step set at a hundredth of a second, and we have our, our loop that is going to animate the pendulum running a hundred times a second from the rate statement here. Um, beginning in the loop, we um, start by reevaluating the torque on the pendulum uh, by taking another cross product for the ball's position and the force of gravity. Then we um, implement angular momentum principle to update the angular momentum ball dot L and then furthermore use that to update the angular position of the end of the pendulum. Then using a pull to our pull to cart function which I created up at the top um, to convert from polar to Cartesian coordinates we, we take our angular position to get an XYZ vector position to animate the position of the ball and then furthermore we create the string um, by just telling it it's the string is um, is a vector from the origin, uh, which is the the uh, axis of rotation of the pendulum, to the ball's position. Um, next, with this statement, we uh, tell it to append a trail to the end of the pendulum while t is less than six seconds, so that we we see the the motion of the pendulum relative to the rotating reference frame. Next in the loop, we have this uh, pegs dot rotate statement where we begin to uh, rotate the reference frame um, just as the Earth rotates under a Foucault's pendulum to prove that the Earth uh, in fact rotates. Um, so that's rotating um, our pegs the Earth. And then down here with our beta equals beta plus latang uh, lat function as well as the scene dot forward, we're rearranging the camera so that it rotates um, at the same uh, angular velocity as the pegs do. So by rotating a camera and the and the earth that the uh, pendulum is rotating with or isn't rotating with reference to, you know what I'm trying to say, um, we see that uh, it actually looks um, as a Foucault's pendulum would on the Earth. Um, furthermore, this is just our here, our our graph for the position, and we actually had to come up with this little trick where we took the the Paul's x position multiplied by a cosine of beta um, to find the x position relative to the rotating reference frame, where beta is the amount is the angle that the reference frame has rotated from its initial position. Um, for the x position um, relative to the reference frame, and then for the y position relative to the reference frame, we would multiply the uh, ball uh, position in the x direction times the sine of beta, once again that angle that the reference frame has rotated to find the y position relative to the, uh, 
moving reference frame. Um, so now then we're actually going to talk a little bit about what kind of things we can modify here. So up here with this latitude, our lat, um, we have equal to the latitude of the pendulum where it is on the Earth. So at the moment we have it at pi over 2, or uh, 90 degrees, which would mean that the the pendulum is at the um, north pole of whatever planet we are on, so it's at it's at the um, tip of the axis of rotation. Um, so that means we have maximum uh, rotational effects due to um, the rotation. However, for example, if we were to put the pendulum at uh, zero degrees or the equator, um, wow, we would see that we don't have any rotational effects, um, and this just acts like a regular pendulum. We just see the pendulum go back and forth um, with that path maintaining um, just uh, what we'd expect from a regular pendulum. Um, and on the position, we just see that the pendulum goes back and forth um, in the x direction with no change in the y direction. If we were to put it anywhere in between, um, we just see the same similar effects. Just somewhere in between, no effects and the full effects that we see at um, 90 degrees. Sorry about that. Um, pi over 2. Uh, furthermore, we could change the acceleration due to gravity, so it would act like we're on another planet. We could change the length of the pendulum, or we can change the length of the day. Um, so to create something that would behave similarly to Earth Day, we're an Earth uh, Day, we're going to have a 100,000 second long day. So that's 100,000 seconds. And we're going to try running that to see how it would behave as if it were on Earth and at the Earth's north pole. We see that the petals of the of the flower created are much spaced much more closely together. Um, the effects um, are much more limited because the Earth's day is extremely or the Earth's rotation is much slower compared to the period of the pendulum. However, when I was at a thousand seconds before we saw that nice petal action getting about six petals um, to create that very obvious um, Foucault's pendulum effect. However, if we create um, an Earth day of, or a day of only a hundred seconds, um, we see some more interesting effects where um, the graph behaves uh, quite uh, strangely. Um, initially, I suspected that this might be because the um, day length of the day was longer um, was, uh, or, or sorry, the, the length of the day was shorter than the period of the pendulum, but in fact that's not the case because here the day is 100 seconds long and the period of the pendulum is 2 seconds. But we still get this very weird behavior because it appears as if it's doubling back retrograde motion um, similar to um, what the planets undergo when um, they pass each other uh, relative to Earth. Um, this was a problem uh, this is one of the many problems with a geocentric model because we would see planets start to do loops. Um, Mars in particular was the one that uh, early astronomers noted for this strange retrograde motion. Um, if we set it that the length of the day is in fact equal to the period of the pendulum, we get um, some crazy effects, probably just because of the limits of v python. Um, and so it just overall craziness, really, so that doesn't really matter. Um, so I'll put that back up to a thousand, um, and I guess I can show you the uh, pedal effects that we were... Oh, actually, one more thing. Um, up here we have this function that I've defined, lactang uh, phi, uh, uh, where phi is the argument of the function. Um, and all that this means is we can take uh, the the um, latitude, um, in this case, which I'm saying is phi, um, I take the sine of that, multiply to pi, and then divide by the length of the day. And what that gets us is the angular velocity of the Earth's rotation at that current location. So that helps us measure the effects, uh, or the Foucault's effects. Um, 
So I guess I'll just show you um, a good um, example with six pedals um, with a, a thousand second long day, and uh, that'll be it. So actually, and sorry, let me correct there, it's a five pedal effect um, with um, with a hundred second long day. I was saying a six pedal effect before, but it's actually only five pedals. Um, so that'll be all for now. Uh, thank you for listening.